Hello, welcome to another Café Rollist uh, to distract, to uh, enhance your somewhat lunchtime experience. I normally take advantage of my son having a snap. Turns out he's having less and less need of a nap, so maybe uh, the existence of this the existence of this show is threatened. But I got a fantastic guest today, uh, Jonathan. Would you could you introduce yourself, please? Of Oops. London RPG community. Sorry, could you repeat that? Because I just realized that your sound was off for the, on my side <laughs> for the stream. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'm an organizer for the London RPG community. Um, I am an email marketer by day, a consultant, freelance, um, sole trader, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, my my passion. Uh, has very quickly become over the last couple of years uh, role-playing games. Um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> that's quite a bit. So my first ice-breaking question, which is not traditional, is oh, what is your routine like at the moment in this uh, lockdown situation? Oh, are we still in lockdown? Are you staying alert at the moment? Um, I'm still in lockdown-ish. Not really, kind of. It's the weird. prime minister so, is not very clear about that in the UK right now. So no, the whole government's not very clear about that, and it's a it's a gripe for me. But so for me, um, I work work from home, wherein actually um, I work from my my mum's she's got a really nice house and she's got space like an office space so I kind of she's let me set up here and 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 I work here uh my mum lives just down the road from me uh and I realize I'm admitting to this stuff online so I'm probably going to get fined which I can't afford um but basically uh, a, a few months ago I was really sick and I went to the hospital just before the lockdown happened and um, I was in hospital and I just got released from the hospital just before this lockdown happened and then it all kind of happened uh, where I was actually released to my mum's because it was it was better for my recovery than <laughs> um, than the flat that I lived in with my wife. Um, <laughs> but so for for a good while, I have actually spent most of the lockdown uh, living at my mum's. Uh, I've now moved back into, well, actually what is a new flat um, with my wife uh, during lockdown. But uh, she went and moved all on her lonesome. I wasn't allowed to help. Um, but we had an outpatient call with the doctor and they said, yeah, you should be okay. So I've moved back in with my wife, which has been wonderful. Um, but I'm still walking 10 minutes down the road to get to my mum's to do work during the day. Um, it's based on the principle that, I mean, we're going into a bit of international politics here. Uh, New Zealand had this thing called uh, bubbles. You had work bubbles, you had family bubbles. And the idea is that those, it wasn't just individual households. You actually had this household, if you picked another household to be connected with you could go to them and you could spend time with them as long as you weren't interacting with anyone else so in that sense i'm kind of taking that principle and so because my mum lives only a few minutes down the road i come here during the week i spend some time with her i go home i spend some time with my wife um and it for me, it's it's business as usual. Like, like not a lot has changed in my life because of the whole. I was working from home anyway. In it, that sense, so that's a bit of a long-winded roundabout answer. 
I mean, no, it's it's very interesting. I mean, the the bubble principle. I believe they started enforcing that in Belgium uh, starting this weekend or something okay. like that, which raises a lot of questions because the, the concept is not only yourself are not seeing other people than your mother, but your mother is not seeing other people. So your, your bubble. Mm. So the, the the question is: so the prime minister in Belgium, she uh, instructed people to form groups of four people. But that means you need to choose. <laughs> so you can choose based on family, uh, who's the closest, who, who are the friendliest person in your area, or who it is the most convenient to to interact yes. with. But but yeah, how do you make that choice, and how do you justify that choice then to say, I, I mean, I don't have the issue because my parents are all abroad and uh, all my in-laws are abroad. But it would be like, yeah, you know what? Uh, we decided to spend time with. Uh, my wife's parents and not my parents <laughs> or you know what we decided to spend time with two friends rather than any of our relatives <laughs> yeah I think from from what I understand you know you've got it's the work bubble it's the family bubble you could only pick one or the other at least from the New Zealand perspective like so for those that could work or those that were working the idea is that that work bubble is is what takes priority because you're going to interact with those people if you're going into work. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens in the UK. But um, the the announcement yesterday was just entirely a bit rubbish. Yeah. And I'm not a political science major, so. What what do I know? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, have you still, regardless, picked any new uh, hobby or skill set, or you know, started doing something you haven't been doing before the the lockdown? Uh, I haven't. I mildly regret that. What, what but about running wife... stuff for London RPG community online? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. I just wanted, I just wanted to show off how proud I was of my wife. Oh yeah, well, in, yeah. amazing um, karaoke singer, by the way. Oh, oh, thank you. Um, my wife a few weeks ago picked up a ukulele and she started learning how to play the ukulele. Me too. So she learned a few. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, she learned a few songs. She she learned the happy birthday. So we've had a couple of birthdays during the lockdown period. So she's learned the happy birthday to be able to sing it to people. Um, uh, Somewhere of the rainbow, a couple of the songs that she's done as well. Um, She sent them all to me on WhatsApp. So this is actually while we, she um, went back to work. Um, Whilst I was still recovering. So um, she was isolating from me. Um, which was a bit of a hard time, but yeah, I'd get messages from her where she'd been um, practicing on the ukulele and that was lots of fun, but I haven't picked up the ukulele. I haven't really picked up anything else other than, uh, yeah, well, as, as you so uh, subtly suggested, um, playing role-playing games online, which isn't something I'd really had any practice with. Um, because we were meeting in person up until the lockdown. So London RPG Community ooh, ooh. is a, uh, a a big group of people who very quickly become friends and we play uh, role-playing games together. Um, the, uh, the most common draw at the moment seems to be the Cantus Expanse, which is a D&D 5e campaign. It's open world, one shots that are all connected to each other. But um, we also do other campaigns, other systems, um, all sorts. And actually what we found, there's been a freedom in running uh, games online in our ability to run almost more or have the opportunity to open up for people to try new things. Um, And um, yeah, so we've gone from meeting in three locations over three evenings every week 
to meeting purely online. Uh, thankfully, technology has been scaling with us, which is good. So we've got um, 60 plus people, I think, that uh, are our, our regular players that join us like every week, uh, sometimes multiple times a week uh, for games. Um, I have started running a, a fortnightly game of Tales from the Loop. Oh, nice! Um, thank you. I love I love the system. I love uh, Free League's uh, Year Zero engine. I love the setting of the eighties and you know playing kids and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've actually set up the the. The book itself is is gorgeous. The artwork is there from Simon Stallenhag, but um, I've I've kind of taken um, the the seeds that they drop in in the role playing book called uh, the Mystery Landscape. So I've been planning some of those out, and I've I've had some players every week. It's kind of drop in drop out, but I've got a regular set of players it seems, um, which is really nice. What are um, you running so that? I'm, uh, my next game is going to be tomorrow, <laughs> uh, tomorrow night, and then I, it's fortnightly on Tuesdays. Cool. Um, so not the nineteenth, but possibly the twenty sixth. Need to keep an eye on that. See if I can join you sometime. That would be very. Yeah, nice. please do. Um, because you, you shared something on Facebook the other day about uh, Spot the Robot Dog that is supposed yes. to be launched for measuring social distancing or something. It's got yeah. like, a, like a... In Singapore, uh, so they, they use the uh, Spot the, the Dog, a, a robot conceived by Boston Dynamics. Uh, Boston Dynamics goes those amazing products and videos, uh, the robot they're building, it. they're, they're very eerie and they they, they they're pretty much in the the realm of Tales from the Loop when you you see the the technology level and the, the ability. They they got one a big one. Is it called Big Dog? I, I don't remember. But the the large one, you you see it and you you could mount it and it's really weird yeah. to see it walk through the woods or walk on a very slippery surface like ice, because the the reaction of the robots are are pretty much like the reactions of an animal trying to find their bearing on the, on that ev uneven yeah. floor. And yeah, the, the, what this... I go ahead, go on. No, sorry. I was just going to say what I always found a little bit eerie about Boston Dynamic wasn't necessarily the robots that they make and are testing out, but the the name something dynamic was shared with um, the evil corporation behind the TV uh, that was in the TV show Fringe which was about dimension hopping, alternative universe stuff, um, weird science bits. So I always thought that was a bit creepy. But yeah, robots are fun. Fun fact, in, uh, in Belgium, the main internet provider is called Skynet. So, <laughs> and it, and, it's, oh, and it's, really? it's much more recent than uh, the Terminator movie. So, but yeah, people were not... Uh, that aware I didn't make really the connection in Belgium about that. So Skynet is what you you subscribe to for your internet in a, a very crappy oh, wow. and expensive internet, I would say. But <laughs> still, one of the um, uh, I go going back to um, free league games. Um, I got into Coriolis a little while ago. I haven't. Pl I've I've played a couple of one shots, but I haven't. I want to get into the campaign. But I got um, some of the stuff in Swedish, and I've been using Google Translate to. Uh, this is some of the old stuff, so before the Freely got it. So this was the Yarn Ring and stuff. I've been using Google Translate to translate the Swedish into English. So there's been a bit of um, filling in the gaps on my end. But uh, one of the things that they talk about in one section. Um, is something called the celestial web. And I'm there like, celestial web, that's just a fancy term for Skynet, isn't it? And of course, it's talking about um, uh, like androids, like artificial intelligence stuff as well. 
uh, where they talk about that stuff. So I was like, wait a minute, that's just Skynet. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, London RPG, we use a combination of Discord, we use Roll20, um, a few other things. A lot of the stuff that we do is kind of theater of the mind, like when we're at a table. Uh, playing in person, a lot of it is just theatre of the mind anyway. Occasionally there will be a crudely drawn map. Uh, sometimes um, there are minis, but most often it's players using, hey, look, this is my character, and you know they're normally really, really good. So, But, um, yeah, like online's a bit, it's been a, a learning experience for a lot of the DMs, but also from an organisational point of view, trying to go like, cool, all right, how do we, how do we wrangle all the all of these cats into playing online? <laughs> uh, well, uh, Persephilia here is playing weekly with uh, each. I think it's each. Oh, bad air day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a question mark on my head. Uh, yeah, Persephilia has been playing uh, weekly. I think it's she. She's got all, pretty much two D and D games per week. She's got one with wow. uh, the London RPG community in Cantus, uh, leveling up her ranger, and then she's got one with her colleagues from work who start finally launched uh, a D and D table. And uh, yeah, so both her and me, we the two of us, we we never played as much as we are right now. I'm playing also two evening per days now. Uh, on Thursday, I've got a French group with who we are playing mainly indie games. I mean, we played just twice, and one of those two times, uh, the game was mine, the, the one I'm designing. And uh, yeah, yeah, and now I'm running a lot of playtests in the evening. Uh, I For a while, I was playing with my very first RPG group on Monday, so people tuning in, tuning, uh, tuning in regularly to Cafe Rollies would have heard about that one. But I left that table because, yeah, it was, yeah, it was my very first RPG group in Belgium and I found out that I mean it's a question of taste everybody but me was having fun but I wasn't because they're still playing like we did in the late 90s early 2000s and I found out that my taste evolved uh, I don't get at a, on a table to be handing a stick to a game master so he can beat me with it, <laughs> with it regularly so but it was a pity I was looking forward to playing that Delta Green campaign but maybe I will run it sometime. That would, that could be fun. But uh, yeah, well, a lot of work. You you know that there is a, a or at least there was a Delta Green campaign in the London RPG community. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. Um, I forgot about I forgot about that one. Oops. I don't think it's currently up and running, um, but. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll pick back up in person at some point. Um, yeah, like it's 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 funny um, with London RPG community. I love it. Um, there's no but here. I do love it. I think um, I'm I'm I started with Cantus D and D five A about three years ago now. You mean you started the um, hobby role playing? You started with that. Yeah, that's, yeah. It. that's your but starting point. It was it was three years ago. Um, I joined this meetup group, and th there were I attended two one shots just before the Cantus campaign was launched. Uh, the one one shots was there was a, it was a D and D five e one shot. Uh, and then there was uh, Kuro, which was a Japanese horror RPG. Ooh, sounds uh, cool. Which was, it was interesting. I've not had the opportunity to play it again. It was run by one of our um, senior uh, DMs and organizers, Andy. Um, it was a really interesting concept. And for someone who doesn't, like horror movies i feel like he did a really good job um but then the cantus campaign started so i jumped in on that and within a couple months i was 
a part-time DM for the Cantus campaign. And then I became more involved in the DMing until I was basically a full-time DM and a part-time player. <laughs> um, and at some point, I just kind of, I had the urge to try other games. Um, the good urge. The good a urge. good urge, <laughs> yes. Um, so, so I um, set up for London RPG community, I set up something called Systems Check. The original idea was that I was just going to get a bunch of quick starts off the internet, quick start PDFs off the internet and just run them. Um, but, uh, oh, there's no but. Like, I, I've done that. Uh, the thing for me, though, I think is I've found the system that I love that isn't D&D, and that's the Free League games. The D6 system of the, the Year Zero engine is really nice everything's really simple it has a lot of elements of the old old school d6 systems where you've got a pool of dice um uh, sixes mean success uh which is really nice but also you're not leveling up on a on a linear scale like you are with D, &D where you've got levels one through 20 with this game um with year zero engine games you get xp for doing things at the end of a session a certain amount of xp you can spend on upgrading your skills or buying talents and that kind of thing so the way that you uh you're not really leveling up so much as just improving your character i really prefer this uh, granular way of approaching things i mean uh I started with Star Wars D6, and that's the whole point. You, you, yeah. Your character is a list of skills, and you are good or not with those, and you raise them however you want. Yeah. So you, you're not a fighter, you're not a bard, you're not a a wizard. You you are someone who's good with a blaster, and maybe he's into hacking as well, and uh, and maybe you 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 can man the the ship's um, uh, shields. But uh, you you decide you decide at each session what you want to do and yeah preferably you do mm. what you've been doing. Yeah, yeah, it's the I'm I'm really enjoying the the way that the system lays out of going. You can have that kind of almost like it's not um, a class. You can have like a career background which gives you certain benefits in certain skills but it's not prescribing you to one class or another or another or another you can kind of do a little bit of everything like you can in real life um the other system that does it in a similar way that i've uh, looked into and i've enjoyed but i haven't played as much as i'd like is genesis which is the fantasy flight games version of Star Wars, but genericified, but it uses proprietary dice, which is a little bit annoying, but they are very nice dice. Is it <laughs> is it the same system? I mean, uh, I'm sure like like two D twenty, like uh, uh, Mutant Year Zero, the the system are adapted to the setting. They're they're not strictly strictly the same, but is it also the system used for the latest version of Legend of the Five Rings? Genesis. Uh, yes and no. I think there's enough. I've not played Legends of the Five Rings specifically, but I do know that it's made by the same guys. Um, Genesis came out after um, Legends of the Five Rings, but Legends of the Five Rings probably has... Uh, a bunch of stuff that they used from Star Wars that they've kind of gone and made specifically for Legends of the Five Rings and uh, subsequently I think they've gone cool well let's make the generic version of this that players can get the book and then make their own settings using our rules suggestions or recommendations rather than specifically going you're going to do this 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 and this and it's more like here are some really cool dice here's the basic mechanics of how rolling the dice works 
um, here are some additional rules for different types of games, like horror, like sci-fi, like this, that, and the other. Um, but yeah, I'd like to experience that more. I think the thing for me though, is that having set up the systems check, which I'm still continuing to do for many of our players, I've found my RPG soulmate, so to speak, you know, that, that system. So like I've, I've used the phrase like, um, D and D is a lot of players, um, first loves but it's not necessarily the person that they're going to end up with in, oh, in that sense. Like it's, it's that high school sweet D and D is, is the high school sweetheart for a lot of people, but it's not necessarily the person that you're going to settle down with. Um, Ooh, I, that, think, I think, I found... think we just found or so for the, the viewers, I started a little social <laughs> experiment by including in the title of our videos, some, clickbait outrageous statements uh, aimed at shocking people into viewing our videos I think that one uh, so how would we phrase that it's uh, D&D is just your first high school, high school sweetheart it's not the one you're gonna end up with I mean I've, we're gonna have to shorten it I think to be yeah, a bit more you? clickbaiting uh, I, I but to... it's the, 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 the principle is basically a lot of people get into it through D&D but it's not the role-playing game that they kind of, you know, end up with. Um, I firmly believe that. And so part of, I've, I've found my one, the Year Zero game. So basically anything that Free League have been putting out, I've been backing on Kickstarter. I've been pre-ordering when they put it out. Um, you know, my shelf is very quickly filling up with Year Zero engine games. Um, and I've I've actually sold on my D and D stuff, not least because London RPG has the digital content license. Um, but yeah, I still do the systems check because I want other people to find that system for themselves. Within London RPG community, we've had a lot of uh, Powered by the Apocalypse games, um, which is really nice i've only played once or twice i think um i'd like to try it a bit more because uh it seems quite popular and it seems really simple um you have 2d6 and yeah the simplicity uh, uh, yeah it's 2d6 uh the the the, cons yeah. the the principle is is simple it's the uh sorry for the fans of pbta if i, I got the math slightly wrong but uh uh, so you roll 2d6, you make the sum of the results. If it's 1 to 5, you failed, but you get experience point when you fail. Mm -hmm. And usually you need 7 experience point to to pass a level, so it can be quite fast. I mean, at least in Dungeon World. Uh, and I think in Masks. The, if you... So 6 to 7, it's... 6 to 7? Who's, or seven to nine. So, yeah, I think it's seven to nine. You succeed, but with a complication. And uh, 10, 12, you succeed. You just succeed. And so that's the okay. basic. But then yeah. you use, you trigger moves, which often have special qualities linked to the, the results. Like, for instance, there's a, in Dungeon World, there's a law. Uh, or, or this one, I really like it. Um, what is it. What is it called? It's a it's a perception check, but you have, I think, five preset questions, and if you succeed, you can ask one of the questions, and if you succeed, ten, twelve, you can ask th maybe three or several of the questions, and uh, stuff are, uh, yeah, the questions are are really, who's really in charge here, like. If you enter uh, an inn, you throw that, and you're like, yeah. well, you can see the barkeeper is doing thing, but it's probably by n noticing stuff here and there, you can make up that mm -hmm. the place is probably owned and run by a mob boss who you know, right. you see yeah, regulars. Yeah. There's one which is, uh, what is useful to me here? So, oh, mm -hmm. well, you find, uh, you go there uh, in the inn, and you find the. Uh, a bottle of wine which you sure if you share it with the right person uh, they will be uh, your friend or there's one what is about to happen and 
you, it's it's a bit it's interesting as a way of considering a scene as a game master. Sort of the mistake, mm. but not quite a mistake I made when I run Dungeon World. I took pleasure trying to answer in advance the question for myself as prep, but at the same time, it's a bit uh, uh, a sacrilege to do it <laughs> for the the spirit of the game because you're supposed to to improvise and f be free flowing mm. and so on. Um, but yeah, I'd like to play more of that. I really recommend Masks, a new generation. For me, it's the best superhero game out there, and it's it's powered by the apocalypse as well. But I would yeah, say it's well, we, simple. We, we we have one of those games that running uh, weekly on Saturday afternoons. Well, you need to join it. <laughs> one of those. I think for me, um, I. I only really get like enough for for one game, one game a week because any other time I spend, I'm prepping for that game. Um, because I tend to be the GM because hey, that I'm I'm the most interested, so therefore I have to run it for other people. Um, so I I normally give myself one opportunity a week because I still have to spend time with my wife and she works shifts, so it's not always the same. It's not always uh, available. So I can't always say, yeah, I can do this night, this night, and this night, or I can't even just say I can do this night and this night. Um, but I have generally set out so when when we weren't in lockdown my wife at, was part of an amateur dramatics group um that met on tuesday evenings which is when i would do uh london rpg community stuff so that worked out quite well we could go off to our separate hobbies come back together again in the later in the evening when we got home um actually the last yeah. the last social thing i did before getting into lockdown was a a workshop with your sister it reminds me it was the oh yes workshop. of course we did a couple of those before everything went to pot um <laughs> my my sister is um yeah she is uh an improver she's done that for years now um as a as a hobby and she works for a, a an improv theater company who do a lot of training uh and you know i think a lot of people go oh but the training what's that even about but actually you know improv is a lot of fun and spending as much as you might on doing that three four hours is possibly more worthwhile at least in my eyes um than going to the movies and going out to dinner you'd spend more money on that and as enjoyable as those things are um someone who loves dinner and a movie um i mean i, I found I had great fun there we, i've been there twice now and i really look forward to having an opportunity mm. of doing it for a third time yeah that'll that'll be something to bring up with my sister again um because it was it was quite popular we got to do we got two in um and uh yeah i think i i hope it helped a lot the the general premise was uh do a bit of improv kind of help get people out of their shells a bit and and um being a bit more creative to help them with their role playing characters and you know the characterization that you get up to at the table yeah, the little one is not happy with me streaming. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what, what was it? I think there's a new game. Ah, they announced a big license at Free League, but I'm trying to remember what it what it was. Don't break my cable, Soren. Uh, <laughs> do you know what, what what that was? So it wasn't Dune because Dune it's modified. I think they announced uh, them securing a big license, but I'm not sure it was An another big license because they got oh. Alien, which was released. I remember now. It's they're doing the second edition of One Ring, so somehow they oh, nicked that from they Ring are... Seven. They are going to be the publishers of it, and they are. It's not being converted to the Year Zero engine. No, it's still they, still an upgrade of the original system of One Ring. 
Yes. Um, so how I have no idea what happened, but Cubicle 7 no longer has the license and it was instead given to Free League who are doing a very light touch, but they're going in and helping with editing. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's moved over as well. My having found them a couple of years ago and seeing just how much they've kind of exploded really in the last couple of years. Yeah, definitely. Um, my my concern as as a fan is that they're not spreading themselves too thin. But I'm not I'm not the business owner, so <laughs> it's kind of uh, and it's interesting because they they they've been in Kahoot uh, for quite a while. Uh, the the two, you know, it's Modifius and Free League, and they, they've been growing alongside each other for a while. I'm not sure it's still the case, but uh, Modifius was distributing their games. Uh, the two of them worked together with White Wolf on the new Vampire: The Masquerade, and uh, yeah, it's been a, an amazing time. journey to see the, those two publishers, those two European publishers, and one of them based in London grow and grow and grow and grow and uh, and have new IP after new IP. I mm. mean, Alien was a great IP to have. Tales from the Loop was a brilliant idea. They, I remember they, I believe they did it in a very short, somewhat short notice for developing a game and they released it just in time around the time Stranger Things was out. So they they really managed very well their Kickstarter campaign with that. They, they were at the right time doing the right thing it was very very impressive and they do amazing products oh yeah i think so they were so free league were the original publisher for simon stanhug's art book oh, Tales from okay the which is where they then got the idea well why don't we make a role-playing game out of this because simon's book was here's a picture of a painting and here's a short story attached to it of a of Simon Stalinhag pretending uh, he's reminiscing about his childhood in the 80s where weird technological things are an everyday occurrence. Um, and so I've just been reading through that and reading those little stories of like an adult looking back on his childhood, um, which is actually a lot like kind of how the, the TV show ended up more so like the stories in the art book than necessarily the role-playing game. Um, I don't know if you watched the Amazon series yet. I started a, an episode. It was interesting, but I didn't have time to finish it because I, I'm very stressed for time at the moment. By, by my own fault, I mean taking care of my son, of course. Uh, and he <laughs> actually, I remember putting on Tales from the Loop. I watched quite a bit of the first episode, and then he started requesting quite strongly to that we go back to Hey Dougie or uh, Shaun of the um, Shaun the <laughs> Sheep, not Shaun of the Dead. But uh, it's, I, it's I, I interesting. will say, um, I will say, Tales from the Loop, the TV show, is a slow burn. It's a slow burn. It's uh, it's an anthology series, but it's an anthology series based around basically a, the same set of characters. So it's based around um, a small group of characters, mostly a family. Oh, so you still see and... one character through another. It's not like uh, Twilight Zone where the episodes are completely unrelated. They're, can... they're not completely random, no. So... It starts off with the first episode is the story of a little girl who uh, finds herself in a very strange position. She meets a little boy. He's only 10 years old or something like that. His name is Cole. Cole tries to help this little girl find her mother. Um, uh, the little girl is introduced to Cole and Cole's family. The second episode is then um, Cole's older brother. I think that's the second episode. Yeah. Cole's older brother um, is the focus of the second episode. Him and his friend find something out in the woods and then shenanigans occur. And um, 
uh, Cole's older brother basically gets a girlfriend. And then the third episode is focused around that girlfriend. And then the fourth episode is, is based, is based on Cole's grandfather, uh, Jonathan Price. Um, and so it kind of carries on like that. It's a very slow show. Uh, so you really kind of have to be in the mood for it. It is slower than normal TV these days where things seem to get a little bit faster. This show, uh, does a really good job of of just lingering on shots that could be pieces of art from Simon Stanley Hagg's work, um, which I think is just gorgeous. I think it's um, very commendable to to go for something else, you know, uh, even if it's more divisive in terms, you know, it might turn to be not as popular mm. as other shows, but mm. I, I, f I like the idea of a show trying to do its own thing and also to mm. be a bit demanding so you, you need to, to commit a bit to it to to really jump on board i really hope they yeah they're gonna find their audience and they're gonna be a second season although i haven't seen the, the rest of it but i like the idea of even if it was not my thing i like the idea of something out there being different than all the other shows in terms of format yeah as far as i've been able to find out i don't think there's going to be a second season i think they literally just wanted to make it one run Oh, okay, so that was a decision. It's not a result of people not not buying into I it. I think I th I think so. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Um, just do it once. Do it the way that you want to do it. You know, th th apparently they've decided not to compete with Stranger Things, which is probably for the best. Well, it's um, not the same cause thing, I, yeah. Well, I I remember when I first watched it, coming from the role playing game going to the TV series, I was, I was, there was a little bit of me that was like, this is gorgeous, but I'm a little bit disappointed because it wasn't like the role-playing game. The role-playing game is, it's not Stranger Things, Stranger Things, but there are elements of it where it's kind of like you'd expect there to be, and the kids, you know, Scooby do it. They invest, they find something weird they pick up some clues, they investigate it, they get to the bottom of it, and life moves on. Um, yeah, it's you know, kids on bikes. It. I mean, that's another tabletop roping game, kids on bikes. But the, yeah. this idea of the, the Goonies, the old Spielberg movies, which are all uh, mm -hmm. from the 80s. Uh, the, this, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Tales from the Loop TV show does not do that. There is resolution, but it's it's slow and it's it's not always happy so i mean mild spoilers there but it's quite um amazing the i mean the number and amount of content that we can enjoy nowadays uh, mm. it's too many shows <laughs> too many stuff to watch i i've been work trying to sit down with my wife and we're like okay cool what are we currently watching what's on our to watch list you know what are we watching together what are we watching separately because oh yeah that's the, there that's is the so thing. much stuff like what are we what are we watching together we've started my wife um she loves re-watching stuff so something you know something that's familiar that she can just put it on in the background so re-watching stuff tends to be her thing but i've sat her down i said right we're gonna watch something new um but it's not new new it's actually old it's 1996 1997 it's buffy the vampire slayer oh we uh, my wife uh, is going through a rewatch as well love that show so uh we're in season one where not not quite halfway through, I don't think. Um, she's enjoying it a lot, actually. But yeah, it was kind of like she very easily slips into the habit of just rewatching stuff. I'm like, no, there's there's other stuff out there that I want you to watch. And one of those things happens to be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, but there's also a bunch of new stuff coming out. So we've got to work out how we're going to watch all this stuff. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, have you tried uh, I'm not okay with this? 
on no, Netflix. No, what's that? So I don't want to spoil it, but it's it could be a very very good uh, sticking to the basics. Um, yeah, X Men show. I mean, it, it, it's more than that, but it's the it's the classic teenager starts developing powers. So it's Carrie oh, okay. X Men. But it's really, it feels really up to date, and at the same time, visually, it's a bit in that realm of, uh, yeah. When we were watching it, I compared it to. Have you ever seen It Follows? No. Uh, so I have it, to think about that for a second. Uh, it no. Follows is a is a horror movie, not graphic, but horror movie, and uh, the concept of it is that you got this creature you can pass it on to other people and when uh, the creature is passed on to another person it doesn't follow you anymore but uh, when it's passed on to you it follows you and it follows you in a rather slow way and I don't want to describe what the creature is like and so on but it's really yeah, it's very interesting in a way. It's this, it's a horror story. You got a nice, interesting subtext, but the the whole setting feels like, is it the future or the past? Because you got some element of stuff, I, and I know I've been googling some. Uh, there's a handheld sort of phone or Walkman. At some point, I've been googling to try and find out if it existed because it looks like it exists, but it doesn't. And you're not sure if it's the past or the future. Uh, I'm not okay with it. It's slightly like that. Uh, your you're not sure if it's the present in an area where fashion and whatever is available at hand in the U uh, in that part mm. of the U.S. It's sort of outmoded, or if it's just the the fashion that the teenagers are following. But it, it's got this timeless feel. So it's not like Stranger Things in the '80s, but you don't have this thing like stuck into the present. Yeah. And and yeah, it's it's, a, it's just a young girl who start developing powers, but it's mainly about about her how she feels about her relationship with a uh, with our mo mother and uh, and her friends and uh, who she's in love with. So it it would be a good monster heart or something like that. But this is yeah, the 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 fantastical aspect is very limited. Okay, cool. That's interesting. I think you you're talking about the timeless um, setting. It's not sure if it's the past or the future. I that was one of the things that I really liked about the TV show Gotham, oh, which, really? I, I, to be honest, I didn't finish it. But it was a very specific uh, design choice that they made. Uh, I think probably inspired a little bit by Batman the Animated Series, which was very Art Deco. Um, it had kind of Art Deco elements, 1950s elements in the in the 90s animation, um, as well as obviously f big fancy future computers with light up keyboards and stuff like that. But um, Gotham, the TV show, was very much like here are cars from the 70s, here are telephones from the 70s, but also like you know here's not not future stuff but here's modern stuff as well so they kind of mixed it all in so it was very specifically a timeless series um which i i think is a really interesting design choice but yeah yeah we are i think we are in a, a wet spot with our present I, I was watching a video about that about the all few movies even if they are set in the present uh, even stuff like uh, Marvel Universe things, they you don't see smartphones as much. You know, you don't see people using technology as much as we do in the present for two reasons. Uh, mm. The first reason is, and that's my own interpretation, uh, the, the videos developed a bit more the subject, but on one hand, I think it's because that technology... Um, goes redundant too fast so by the way you shoot your movie mm. or after two years it, it just looks so old uh, by the way it's funny to watch Buffy because you see some when the, someone puts I think it's in the first episode there's a guy sitting with a laptop on his lap uh, on the stairs of the high school and th that's such an old thing you see things um, but yeah it, it's fine but yeah in big movies they avoid it because uh, it, it impairs the movie uh, long term 
And I mm. think it's also the, the reason is yeah. the people who write stories, uh, either they're older or even if they're younger, they, they, we haven't got our head. You know, we're still in motion. It's not set or we're using all this stuff. It's still changing way yeah. too much. And I think with the, the lockdown, it's it's very rapidly changing within a copy community with the with like the role playing game community so mm. so it's not set enough so that you can tell a a story which does not focus on that it's not so so you tend to avoid it you don't you don't have your your unless it's chef uh in which they were doing vines <laughs> which is completely outdated now and they're using twitter yeah. you, you don't really do that because yeah it's not it's not integrated enough yet. It is in our life, but it's not in our stories yet. Yeah, yeah. D Speaking of chef, the chef show on Netflix is fantastic. I love John Favreau, but the idea that in in doing that movie Chef and getting so involved in um, professional food making and hospitality that he just decided. <laughs> hey, why don't we just make a TV show about this? And so, you know, each episode they go off and they um, meet There's someone across the US who is very successful in doing a very particular thing within restaurants. Um, they spend some time with them. They cook a, they cook a particular dish. Um, just absolute food porn, and I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I need to check it out more. I think I watched part of an episode, but I mainly saw um, uh, a snippet of it, which was, and I'm, I'm not blaming her for that because I get it, but it's quite fascinating. It was Gwyneth Paltrow having a conversation with John Favreau and not remembering being in this or that Marvel movie, which I get. She does mainly cameos for it. Must be the same to be one in another, but it's fascinating how it would be the biggest thing in our lives to be in one of those movies. Yeah. And for it's like, wait a second, was I in that one? I don't remember. Which, yeah, which, Who was which, in that? What, was Robert was it? in it? Oh, I don't remember. I've guessed... <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you say that. So my church pastor is uh, old friends with the one of the many actors that played Howard Stark. Oh, um, uh, the one from the Agent Carter TV show, the the and the Captain America, um, the uh, not the Winter Soldier, the first one, the first Avenger. Yeah, I love um, this guy. Oh, what's his name? So, uh, so not 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 Slattery, the guy from Mad Men, but the younger one. And Dominic um, Cooper. He was, I think. Yeah, that's it, Dominic Cooper, who was also in Preacher. That's yeah, it. I love him in Preacher. Great actor. Mm. Um, but yeah, my, my pastor was telling me that when he was catching up with his friend, Dominic Cooper, um, <laughs> he, was like, he, he basically lost track of which cameos he was doing as that character across, whether it was movies or TV shows or whatever. Like He was just kind of showing up going, cool, I'm playing this character. I don't know what for, but I'm playing this character in this stuff. So just do it. So yeah, I, it, it got very messy is not the right word, but it was very involved very early on. Remember when they used to do the um, Marvel one shots back in yeah, phase one. And so they did, they did a, a, a agent Carter one shot before doing the agent Carter show. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was kind of, it was almost like a, like a, a do people want to see this thing? Because a lot of it was then, because quite a few of them were involved around um, Agent Coulson, weren't they? Yeah. And so that then turned into the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, but I, I, I miss those one shots. I wish they did more of them after uh, the first um What's it called? Phase. That's it. I wonder yeah, if... Yeah, I wish they did more of them. I really look forward to them dropping one of their f shows on Disney+. Plus. Speaking of John Favreau, mm. I'm going through the, the Mandalorian at the moment, but I wonder if those one-shots are available on Disney+. Plus. That would be uh, 
quite cool. I know, I know it, Agent it Carter, be... not, maybe not herself, but there's gonna be some tie to Agent. They, they're traveling in time in the last season of Agents of Shield, which a show which I completely dropped at some point. But they, they, they announced they would oh, be the yeah. Agent Carter sort of thing. Uh, so I was like, ooh, I'm interested again. <laughs> So, yeah, no, I I was very much the same. I kind of lost a bit of steam with a lot of superhero TV shows. Um, one of them being Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that I watched. I think the last one I watched was the one with Ghost Rider in it. I heard it was very good um, that season, but I never watched it, that one. It, it, it was. They had like three distinct um, parts to the season, and they all kind of tied into one another. I think they they got that really well. So, like the intro, uh, intro graphics um, were distinct. Um, I think the problem with Agents of Shield is, and I had the same issue. Uh, I, I went a bit f further with uh, the Flash, but twenty two episodes per season, it's it's just a drag, and it's you know it's mm. not just a drag to watch, but you can tell it's a drag to write because there's so much padding just to fill that season those, which is a pre-established episodes yeah it's, it's a, i mean in in buffy it's all right because you got i don't know i find still the even the the in-between episodes are can be quite fascinating but yeah most shows it's really ugh, it's very long yeah i think but that also seems to be a bit of a trend at the moment is cutting episode lengths uh not episode lengths the number of episodes down from what was the traditional 24 episodes a season um of which funnily enough the show 24 only had 20 episodes a season because the <laughs> uh the first episode and the final episode of any given season were two hours long <laughs> oh, pardon me that's an interesting but, um, show. It was so big when it was out. I remember having the the ringtone on my phone. <laughs> I, thought it was so I only watched season one. I watched season one, and then I watched a little bit of season two, and then I didn't watch any of the others. I think I watched a couple. Part of me was thinking, I think I went till the episode th uh, season three or something like that. Part of me was like, "Cool, okay, it's it's a twenty four hour premise. How many times can this guy save the world in twenty four hours?" Like, yeah, my dream. Clearly, it was. If I had the power, at uh, I guess it was a show by Fox. My dream was to have a twenty four hour season with Jack Bauer being on holiday, and, <laughs> and <laughs> like nothing would happen. It would be like a, a really laid back season, but you would have. 24 hours of him just being a, at a resort, trying to relax. Maybe some stuff happened, but it's mainly not important stuff. Maybe he gets a phone call My, from someone. Minor inconveniences yeah. of Biddy Biddy picks it up. <laughs> oh, no. And it's, 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 the, it's the desk, it's the front desk of the hotel saying, There's been an issue with your credit card payment. Can you come down and try again? <laughs> Goes down, oh, tries it again, no. and it works fine. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I mean, I'm, there's a one-page RPG in there somewhere. I'm sure. I think Kiefer Sutherland would be would be up. To, you know, I think he's a great actor. He could have the comedic shops to do something like that. Uh, and I mean, you you like you'd get all the old cast, and they don't even have to be on set together. They can be remotely. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it would yeah. be a good concept. So so many years later, it's okay. just. Uh, we're running out of time. Uh, oh, yeah, we are. Very oh, patient right. with me. Uh, do you have anything left uh, to plug? And where can people find you if you wish to be found? Uh, I can be found on Twitter at Jonathan Pay. Uh, super simple. It's great. London RPG community. Uh, we're on meetup.com. We're on Discord. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. Um, but most of the like our daily what we do is on discord uh you can search us find us join us uh at the moment we're meeting online so strictly speaking we're not just the london rpg community we've actually got members from outside of london uh at the moment playing with us and you know it's it's 
it's not something that we're coming down with saying no you must be from london so join us yeah do yeah, I don't uh, know if any games with us. I don't know if any showed up, but I, I I had quite a few exchanges on TikTok with people who were like, I never played a game or my group is not meeting again, and I was saying that, where are you from, uh, Minnesota? It doesn't matter. You can play with London RPG community and role play heaven. Just just go for it. It's a great time yeah. to join to, us online to play your first game. It's very easy. You don't have to worry or be scared to show up in a in a pub uh, among strangers. You you just show up online. Yeah. And, and that's it, the magic will operate. Well, thank you exactly. very much, Jonathan. Uh, what I, w I need to set up at London RPG Community, I I've drifted a bit away from uh, you folks l lately, doing a lot of stuff, but I, I need to run play tests of my game, uh, Paris Gondo, the life-saving magic of inventoring uh, at the uh, London RPG Community. So if people want to, to try that, they can check the meetup of uh, the RPG Community. Yeah, please do. Amazing. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye.